It was love at first job, but I had a, like just a phenomenal session. I came back in the short go, I got this is it. Triton nailed it. You guys came out of the gate with a beauty. Oh. It's phenomenal. Hello, Tribe Triton. Rudyard Griffiths here, the co-founder of Triton Foils. Welcome to this, one of our regular check-ins with riders who are exploring this amazing T1 monofoil. Uh, the objective of these interviews and conversations is to give you some direct feedback. We have uh, no financial material or other relationship with our riders, except we all share a passion for hydrofoiling. It's a real pleasure to welcome on to this episode of the program, uh, Ian, who's going to share his perspectives uh, riding the T1 monofoil for the first time and just generally what he thinks about this wing. Uh, Ian, great to be in conversation with you. Thank you, Rudy. It's uh, a pleasure to be on the screen and uh, talking about the Triton V1. Um, I'll just give you a little bit about my background. Yeah. So the, the riders know where I am. I, I've been kite surfing for over 20 years. I've been foiling for eight years. I was one of the early adopters. My style of riding is, is I go out to have fun. I'm not the, I'm not the foiler out there who's, who's going the fastest. I'm not jumping the highest, but I come back to the beach with the biggest smile on my face. And, awesome. and, and for me, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, so I, I kite foil, I wing foil, I wake foil behind a wakeboard boat. Um, I wind foil. And, and now one of the things I'm working on is jump pump glide off the dock. And I haven't nice. mastered that yet, but I'm in, I'm in the pro, uh, process of, of, you know, getting that under my belt this summer. Yeah. So, so Ian, tell me, tell me a little bit about your kind of perceptions of the T1 monofoil before you wrote it. Um, right. What, tell us about maybe just, you know, perception versus reality and making that transition from, okay, you know, foiling at the best of times is not easy. And now you're asking me to get on a monofoil. I got no fuselage. I got no stabilizer. What was going through your mind? Sure. So um, what happened was um, I, I watched some of the videos that were out there and, and people seemed to be able to handle the waves okay with it. And I like the maneuverability of it. So those, those characteristics uh, appealed to me. Uh, and so I, I contacted Triton. I, I paid full freight for it. Um, Thank you. And uh, I, uh, I, I watched every video I could get my hands on. And, and so I, I learned about um, where to position it, your foot position, how to ride it. And so I put all that together and I went out for my first ride two weeks ago and, and it, it wasn't ideal conditions. It was okay. 20 knots. It was half a meter waves directly on shore. And uh, I went out with a six meter uh, foil double skin wave kite and with 23 meter lines. I wrote a 110 centimeter pocket board. So you've got, you know, margin of error is, is pretty, <laughs> pretty small with the board, but that's the board I ride most of the time with my larger um, regular, regular foils. Um, I put, I used a 90 centimeter mast. I put the, I put in the mass track, I put it about one centimeter further back Good. than I would with my regular foil setup. And I typically ride about a 1200 um, centimeter squared uh, wave, wave type foil. And then foot position was important as well. Everyone tells you to go with a slightly narrower foot stance. Yeah. So I moved my back foot half a foot width forward on my right. board. Critical. That's and, the yeah. absolute most important thing, Ian, I think for everybody to get the best out of their first sessions is get that back foot lined up with the front, the leading edge of the mast. And then you're going to get that nice steady lift out of the mono wing and you're not going to have the pitchiness. I'd like to think of it like a teeter totter. 
because yeah. you just get that single kind of uh, up flow of uh, force coming up the wing and up the mass. And if you straddle your legs too far on either side, it gets very pitch unstable. But if yes. you just narrow your stance a little bit, and it's not super narrow, it's just shoulder width, and you get that back foot over the trailing edge, you're golden. So I, I dove the kite down. And again, I'm in 20 knots. So I've got lots of power up on the foil immediately. Nice. And, and I'm riding and it feels stable. I'm not porpoising, <laughs> I, I'm just riding. So, so I did a nice tack out and then I said, okay, here comes the jive. <laughs> you know, this, this is where it's all gonna end. And, and I, I knew to keep some power in the kite. I jived around and it turned on a dime and I'm used to having uh, uh, slightly bigger wings and I'm used to, to wing foiling as well uh, on a bigger wing. And if you don't control that super lift at the beginning, you're going to lose it. And I did feel a bit of that lift, but I was already mentally prepared for it. Put a little more weight on the front foot to transfer on that initial bit of lift. And then it just smoothed right back down again, got into my regular weight distribution and I was off. And I can tell you, it was love at first job. <laughs> that, 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 that was it. I went, oh my God. So, so I literally rode in the waves back and forth for half an hour without falling. Wow. No touchdowns, just half an hour. And, and the first time I fell was because I, I lost a little bit of power in the kite. The wind died down a bit. And I had my first little fall after half an hour. But... I, I rode it in those conditions for two hours. I did have a couple of falls and there was only once when I didn't get up immediately. And again, it was, it was my fault because I tried to dig it up wind too quickly as I was getting up instead yeah. of letting it run a little bit downwind. Um, but I had a, like just a phenomenal session. I came back into shore. Oh my God, this is it. <laughs> I could, I could, ride ride down the waves i could do little s turns just play you know, for mm -hmm. me it's playful yeah but good way to put it the thing i find different was I, I was going up wind nicely i could i could hike out onto it as much as i wanted to and it wasn't cavitating the other thing i i did was i said okay let's see how fast we can go yeah and so so I, I let I let the kite just pull me downwind and I just did a downwind full on speed. Yeah. And I've been foiling for eight years. I have never gone that fast <laughs> in my life. And I was and, and it was wavy. And we had that yeah. half a meter solid waves, and I'm just slicing through them, but I am just like and any other foil, I would have foil bombed. I would have cavitated and floated yeah. long before I reached the speed that I was going. And so I, I honestly, I ended up bailing on my own because yeah, of course. I'm just thinking, I am going so fast now. I can't believe it. Yeah. Anyways, I'll get used to the speed on it. So, so that was my that was my initial ride, and then. Um, Yesterday, I, I was out in uh, 13 knots, gust 17, okay. and it was much, it was, the water was a little bit flatter in the spot we were at, and I rode a, an eight meter single skin uh, wave type kite, similar, it was a concept air firefly, okay. similar to the, um, the other single skin foils that are out there, it turns really well. Um, and I just had a great time. I could throw as much power into it. And the, the, the Triton doesn't mind the speed. It, it, you know, you can go relatively slow, but then mm -hmm. you can power it. And you're not going to get pulled off the board. You're not going to, you're not going to get, uh, uh, you're not going to cavitate. And then again, I was just doing downwind runs just carving back and forth as nice. hard as I could. And it yeah. was still, it, it was, it was a joy. And, and so for me, 
it's it's just a foil that's fun. So so yesterday in my my 13 knots gus 17, uh, one of my close friends uh, who I kiteboard hydrofoil with, he races on the world circuit, and and he races just at the the bronze level. We we were we were out you know half a kilometer offshore, and I said to him, okay, you want to try the Triton? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, oh, you think I should? I said, you got to go for it. So so anyway, so we we switch foils, uh, foil boards, and so he's on my 110 pocket board. He actually got bucked the first time he went to launch. And then yeah. I was laughing at him and I said, I got up the first time. <laughs> so, so, so then he got up the second time, no problem. He went zooming down for half a kilometer, did a perfect jive, came back, he tacked, um, but he did a butt check on the tack. Okay. He went down, he jived perfectly. He came back, then he did a perfect tack foil on the 110 centimeter and on the Triton and he had been on it for five minutes wow. and he came by and he said, Ian, I love this thing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so it, it was just like, just phenomenal to see yeah. someone at a super, super high skill level. And, and, and within five minutes, he was riding this thing like I told him that tack you did looked like you had done a thousand of them perfectly. Yeah. Now, so it just shows you the stability that when you know what you're doing, that that the triton yeah. will give you. I'd really uh yeah, recommend to viewers that you just think about when you lose that fuselage and stabilizer, you do get this sensation of being able to turn on a dime. So if you're struggling with your tax like I was, once you go to a monofoil, boy it gets a whole lot easier. Don't tell your friends because they're going to be super impressed at how you're nailing all your tacks, but it allows you to progress so quickly on, on tacks, toe side, heel side, you name it, you're going to be nailing it uh, with the T1. Uh, just don't discount how much like lateral movement when you're tacking and you're having to push that fuselage through the water with the stabilizer as you go up into the wind and your tack uh you get rid of all that resistance it's so much easier uh yeah exactly and and i think as i said the triton doesn't mind the power in the kite yeah it, it, it likes the power it handles the power no problem on any other foil I ride, and I have eight other foils in my garage. Wow! I would I would get ripped off, or I would cavitate. Not yeah. with the Triton. It just loves it. It doesn't mind yeah. the power there. You can do whatever you want on it. You know, yeah. it's it's there to control. Yeah. So I'm super excited about the capabilities now. I am just going to continue to grow and expand my my abilities with this foil. And then the other thing is I like to, you know, hopefully get three kite trips in a, a year. Now I can pack the Triton down yeah. to nothing. And it's just going to be a pleasure to, to take along on my next kite trip. Yeah. Fabulous. And, and I think your moniker should be make foiling fun again. Yeah. You know, it's just a, a pleasure yeah. to ride. Yeah. Thank you. And, you know, that's a key point, you know, in some ways you've been through the journey, right? You've been foiling for almost a decade. Now you've got what, eight, nine foils, you know, the progress that the technology has made. And I think it's almost in the last couple of years, foiling got kind of boring kite foiling because they created these super stable, uh, somewhat slow, uh, you know, riding on rails uh, type foils because it, they were very accessible. They were the antithesis of the race wings that you were foil bombing on, you know, in those early days. But I think what we need to do as an industry and a bit of a sport, when it especially comes to kite foiling is put the fun back in it, get that, that higher performance still accessible, but that sense of playfulness that kind of got lost, I think in the last two or so years of foils that have been manufactured by the big brands. They're, I don't know, once you get a certain level, those foils are great for beginners, but then frankly, they get kind of boring and they're very boring. Once you've ridden the T1 a bit, and you try to go back to one of those, it's hard, Ian. I know my friend already told me, he said, 
Ian, you'll be cleaning up your garage now. <laughs> yeah, there'll be a there'll be a fire sale of coils yeah. Yeah. Uh, at Ian's garage. Well, look, uh, Ian, thank you so much uh, again for uh, purchasing your T1. You know, we're a small startup here, uh, designing all this technology, manufacturing it, importing it, marketing it. Uh, it's a labor of love, and on behalf of Chris uh, and myself, I just really want to thank you and all the other riders that have taken a wing on the T1 uh, monofoil. You guys are innovators, you're adventurers, and we just thank you so much for joining us in this journey. And thank you, Rudy. And, and I'll tell you, Triton nailed it. You guys came out of the gate with a beauty. It's oh, phenomenal. Thanks, man. Okay, thank be you. well, wishing you lots of wind in your forecast and get out on that T1 and give it a heck. Thank you.